Hello everyone, welcome back to 4 Science and Kerbal Space Program 2 Early Access. In the previous session, I sort of stranded Shelk and Kerman in orbit around Tylo. However, all these videos are being done during Twitch live streams, and the Twitch live stream audience decide that we should revert to before we start to try to land. And that decision was basically unanimous. So we could pick up from this Force Science 14X and try to save Shelkin and the other crew in the whatever pod, the Apollo-ish command pod. But instead, we will revert and try the landing again. It doesn't really make the landing easier, though I suppose with more practice, I'll get better at it. So that has been the decision of my live stream audience, and I will uh, abide by that. And we will proceed with trying to land. And we might take a few tries. <laughs> uh, I mean, I could easily do the rescue mission. We could send another craft over uh, on our Saturn V-ish rocket and uh, uh, bring them back. That won't be a problem. We don't have to pack a lander. Uh, of course, we would like to send a lander probe to do the Tylo mission again, or send more people to do the Tylo mission again. Uh, but I think reverting will short circuit a lot of that. We so we can see whether this particular uh, launch could actually have worked. I was probably pretty tired when I tried that landing and so uh, We ended up with a bad result, but it's still tough. It's still tough. So let us uh, pick up from this save and See how it goes Okay, we'll have to have an initial descent orbit and Actually since I want to do some inclination adjustment, we'll do that burn here Okay, that's 73 there. Okay, well, that's probably good enough. Alright, so now... This... We're going with 3 minutes and 20 seconds. So... That's actually... I mean, if this point is 6 minutes and 11 seconds now, that's all the way back here. If we actually do all the Delta V, it says we're like that. But it won't be back here when we actually do the Delta V. So it says 3 minutes and 5 seconds there. Last time we went long and then we went really long. So let's just really believe what it's trying to say here. We're on a higher pass this time. So that might give us a better just sort of drop down situation. It's not as efficient, because we'll be getting more gravity loss from Tylo. And this bar still worries me. So it's five times the gravity of the moon and about two and a half times that of Duna. It's a lot of Delta V and a lot of gravity loss too. We're gonna go retro surface directly instead of basing it on that necessarily. Just kind of get rid of that. That was just for timing. Now, as long as we land, the Kerbal could technically sort of walk over, not jetpack over. The jetpack's useless. Could walk over to the location. It'll be a long walk. It's not like they're gonna run out of electricity or food or water or oxygen or anything. You yeah, know, it takes a lot of practice. Well, we're overshooting about the right amount right now. I'd like to see it like, you know, half on this side of the target and half on that side of the target. That's basically what I'm looking for here. Yep, still about the same. Still what I like to see. We're a little bit north, but I'm not going to try to correct that this time. Yeah, we'll want everything firing when we decouple. It's not going to be a whole lot of time. Okay, and then right when we're sort of dropping in like that, I'm going to cut it. And we've got 527 in this stage. I mean, I think that that distance is okay for a Kerbal to walk. I just need to try and land this safely. I wish I could use my joystick for this. 
One of my big problems is the W, A, S, and D keys and using shift and left control for throttle. I don't like that. Ground is only 15 kilometers. Okay. Seems like a Stonehenge thing. I see rocks around it. Well, I guess we better just dump it. Uh, I'm worried about landing right on top of it, though. Hopefully, it'll all explode very decisively. This time going straight straight down is, I think, pulling the retro mark will be fine. As long as we don't start going up. It still wiggles, you know. I'm not controlling it, it's wiggling all over the place. And here, here it'll wiggle a lot. Oop, okay, okay, okay. Good, 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 good. Uh, well, not great. 2,460 is basically what the Delta V planner said we would take to get back to orbit, so... I don't know if we can get back to orbit without using the jetpack, or... It could be troublesome. It might be a bit of a problem. Okay, well... Let's see. Run crew observation. Tylo craters. No kidding. Um... Let's just keep it. Okay. Chelkin out. Uh, Telkin's not going on the ladder. Mm -mm. Whoa, gravity. Can Chelkin use the ladder? Okay, that way is okay. Well, up is the important part. Okay, Chelkin uh, on Tylo. I had this dream where I aborted to orbit and was stranded on Tylo. Glad that's not how it is. Well, it, it could still be that way. <laughs> There's still that possibility. All right. Uh, science reward available. But the monument is two kilometers away. Kerbals can run. And we can use Fizz Warp. That's a funny sound right there. Sounds are great. Yep, okay. Those are not collidable, at least in Time Warp. My pinky finger is holding down the left shift key and it's getting strained. Well, we certainly can't EVA pack up to it. We're just gonna have to get a view from the surface. Supposedly there are collidable scatter. And... I seem to collide into some, like, on lathe, then it caused my planes to have problems, but... I don't know which scatter is collidable and which ones aren't. Well, that's some... cross-legged figure on top of a pile of rocks there, holding two globes. One very sun-like... whoa, oops. The other are very moon- oh, when I, uh, when I tilt down to look at the thing, it, it zooms into my Kerbal. Great. Okay, so that's as much as I can do. Hmm. It's like, it might be suggesting two different suns, though. Like, because they they have talked about other star systems. And maybe the yellow one is the Kerbal system, and the whitish one is the other system. But who's the Buddha in this case, <laughs> if you will? Holding the two worlds. Okay, we're definitely uh, below it now. It casts a big shadow. I think we should be in range of doing sciencey things. Let's see. Um, yeah, we're in Tylo Monument area, so we can run the crew observation. 
Okay, so we've got all that. To get the full value, we do have to return them back. We can't send anything now because it's just a Kerbal on their own. And now, the long walk back, 2.7 kilometers. Well, I'm liking that they put these monuments for us to... I mean, if it was just scaling up the tech tree, it'd be much more boring. So, having this stuff as a focus is nice. I like having things to actually explore. Now, they didn't have to put monuments. They could have, like, told us that there's this ex extra special rock. Like they did in the KSV-1, right? You had these special rocks that you had to find, right? That's okay. That, that would have been fine, too, but... This does, if, if it's leading to another star system, that would be good. Now, we've got a problem in that I don't know if we have enough Delta V to get back into orbit. Oh no! No! How? <laughs> Guys! We were returning triumphantly and it's ended up upside down. Come on, scream no, Shelkin, no. That's not fair. I should have saved somewhere else. Oh, well, there's some auto saves. They all seem to be Shelkin running around. I don't know if it's upside down or right side up. Okay, um, let's go to the tracking station and turn to it. Okay, 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 it's rocking. It's rocking, but it's upright. Okay, Shelkin's over there. Was Shelkin on the way out or on the way back? <laughs> uh, anyway, let's save this. I think that was the amount of science that we had, right? Let's make sure that we have the monument one. Yeah, we have the monument ones. That's hardly anything for the monument ones, but we're getting 8,000 for the actual uh, mission. At Talo is a little bit weird. In other words, where the zero point is, we're in the crater. And even then, the zero ground level is 21 kilometers up. So I don't know where it's measuring sea level from, but it's in a dangerous place. Now within 200 meters, I think I should avoid time warp. That might help keep the lander upright. That was the downside of having the high pass approach to this location. We ended up using more from the lander than we should have. Okay, so we've saved the situation as far as the lander goes, but... We do still have the whole business of actually getting back to orbit. Uh, yeah, well, I'll probably save before trying to reach orbit, just in case it ends up being that I just use a bad trajectory. So, alright. So, I'm gonna go straight 90. And this will be a real test of that Delta V planner, because this is basically the Delta V it says that it takes to get into orbit around Pilo. <laughs> okay. We do have an extra trick in that I could probably get... I don't even know if it's reading the Delta V right. Um, it depends on how it's reading the Delta V based on the fact that we have a Terrier and two Sparks. The two Sparks actually have different ISP. So let's actually try an Action Group Planner, uh, Action Group Manager. And if we turn off the two Sparks, now it says I've turned it off and hasn't changed anything. <laughs> As far as the Delta V is concerned, it's still the same because this thing is all messed up as far as which engines are actually on or off. It just has no clue apparently. Okay, I think I've got the sparks on again. We do want them for liftoff. But they are less efficient. Okay. Let's go. Okay, I don't know if I can do that any better, so... Gotta try switching off the sparks. 
Um, let's coast a little bit. Point directly prograde. We've got like nearly five minutes to apoapsis. We're close. We've got 145 meters per second left. Oh, our orbit is DV. Uh oh. Uh oh, we've got a problem here. We, we shouldn't be using any thrust at all. Uh oh. We've got the orbit issue. We've got the overall decay issue. Uh, uh, SAS off, there's nothing creating thrust, and we've got those numbers changing. We have no RCS thrusters. Let me try time warp. Okay, time warp stabilizes that. But uh, af out of time warp, it doesn't. I think it's supposed to be once we get past a certain altitude, it'll stabilize. It's only when we're like in a low altitude situation that that problem happens. But still, uh, that can cause problems during landing too, right? In fact, it probably did. Okay, so above that, uh, whatever altitude we are here, it's not doing that anymore. The lander design did not fail us. Um, let's try and get this a little bit higher up so that things can rendezvous. But we need to rescue everything. This guy has zero delta V. It has some mod propellant, but it has zero delta V. Alright. So, with this being the situation, we're gonna send another one of these over here to bring them back. But we won't- it'll be still the Saturn V-ish rocket, but we won't have a lander inside. So, we know that if we launch this with the lander, this is probably not gonna end up with enough fuel to bring them back. So, instead of launching it with the lander, we're going to launch it without the lander, and with that having more fuel. It's double Apollo. And we'll probably have double the thrusters too. I could do something else except for the Terrier, but I think the Terrier is okay. What's the burn time on the Terrier? Ah, oh, 14 minutes. Well, it's very, very realism overhaul. <laughs> so, I guess I'm sort of used to that. But we need a control core. I mean, we can bring them back, but not if there's somebody inside. So we need a control core here. Let's just have a little octo too. Okay, so now this used to be like right, uh, right there-ish. And so we need to trust that long so that we don't have to mess with that fairing. These Delta Vs are once again lying to us. Now, we do have to get to an actual window, so there's Kripalo... Kripalo Light. <laughs> okay, so... Kirbin's not too far off from the jewel window right now. Please don't kill any of the spacecraft, please don't kill any of the spacecraft, please don't kill any of the spacecraft. Okay... Oh, well, some, well there's a jewel probe too, that's fine. Entered Leaf SOI, and lots of things happen. But anyway, we are at the jewel window. It's gonna probably take more power than this because it's got the probe core. So maybe I'll put bigger solar panels. Kick all Kerbals out. Tim again. And let's launch. Okay, well. Here we go. We'll go with the whole countdown. Okay, off it goes. I was just thinking, you know what we could do? Okay, separation. Whoa. What, what if instead of the Saturn V core, you had the 6.6 .6 meter tank form factor and then slap Titan tanks around it as if it was Saturn I? And they made Saturn V like that. 
Oh, overheating. Overheating of the docking port? Uh oh. I think we lost the docking port. Technically, it's not necessary. We'll just rendezvous with the Kerbals and they can EVA in. So, heating issues, apparently. Oh, did we actually get that contract done with the 8,000 signs? We could have uh, got unlocked the 5 meter parts with that and launched that instead of this. But I sort of like this version with the strapped on tanks too. Though the strapped on tanks means that we can't get the right Delta V reading, so... Okay, oh no, quickly! Uh... Okay, so out to Jewel again. Take a look at Mission Control. And yeah, we've got the Tile of Monument one done. So let's see. Extraordinary things, yes. That one was particularly extraordinary. Only signal left is the one at Tylo and it's in our language, sort of. You'll see. Joyous salutations, younger sibling. You have grown upward. We are feeling... Is, is, are they like the Vulcans? Yeah, it looks like like they're waiting for us to develop like the equivalent of warp technology and they're going to uh, come find us where Kerbal does not shine. Yeah, so it is a different star system thing. Must be ready for something meteor. Hmm. Uh, jubilant wheezing. Uh, humorous di diversion is the best pharmaceutical. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, alright. Uh, they do want us to find them. We know that one of the spheres on the Tile Monument represents Kerbal. Oh, I thought so. Uh, nothing like in the Kerbolar system. So yes, it's further away. We need to get there. So, interplanetary thingamajiggies. Not interplanetary, interstellar thingamajiggies. Well, so that was all important. That that uh, That's all for the main missions. We now have this just the secondary missions. But right now... Um... I found a problem. I'm raising my hand right now. Hello. I have a problem, folks. Uh, we didn't plant a flag on Paul. We planted a flag on Tylo. It completed the plant a flag on Paul when we planted the flag on Tylo. We, uh, on principle, on principle, we are going to land on Paul and plant a flag first before I take that science. Hmm. Plant a flag on the Eye of Drez. Well, we'll track that mission for sure. So we have a reason to go to Drez. Enter Elu's sphere of influence. I'm sort of sad that there's no monument on Elu, but. But it is harder to land on Tylo, so. Alright, so we've got stuff to do. We've got the molehole, we've got uh, that one impact site on Gilly, Leif, uh, still Paul, I insist, and then Drez and Elu. But we are also going to go ahead and fill out our Saturn V. So we're going to... Oh, that one. Uh, unlock the heavy nuclear and then the extra large Mephlox tanks so that we can have the quote unquote proper Saturn V. Okay, but back to our mission to rescue those Kerbals around Tylo.